Why did I switch over to a Willwood caliper that had a solid bridge on top and not the removable pin where I can take the pads out on? To answer that question, I'm going to ask Mike here from Willwood. The longer that your brake pad gets, the more chance of deflection, or basically as you depress on the brake pedal, the caliper can spread apart, right? Okay. So we've got this aero light like you have in the front of your car. And then we've got something, it's the dyna light, but you have the super light and it's got this removable pin on this caliper. You see how long that brake pad is? Yep, really short. Do you see how long this brake pad is? Yes. Because it's so much longer, it has more of a tendency to do that deflecting. So okay. what we do is we do that closed bridge to keep the caliper more rigid. Okay. So that we don't have that problem. This kind of style caliper is more geared toward like what I'm doing with the car, autocross, road course racing. And say on a street car, it'd probably be okay to have something like this. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. So, you know, street car stuff, you're talking about hot rods. You're talking about... Um, Show cars. Muscle cars with 15-inch wheels. Yes. That's where you're going to see more of this open bridge caliper, but they're not as concerned about that repeatability like you're going to be using in your car. The other thing that we wanted to touch on is repeatability. Yeah. Why is your rotor so big? Uh, for uh, heat. That's how we manage the heat. Yeah. So we can go lap after lap and just keep using the brakes, and then the rotor becomes our radiator. Yes. And directional vanes are what's going to take that air and scoop it in and push it out so that it's more efficient. Okay. Right? Yep. So as that efficiency is happening, what ends up happening to a rotor? What does it do when it gets hot? Well, the heat's got to go somewhere and it expands and contracts. So as that rotor gets hot, it wants to expand. And as it expands, we start having problems because now we've got your caliper on a tangent. Yes. The rotor's spinning. And as we clamp down on the rotor, what does it do to the rotor? It pulls it apart. So it wants to start stretching, especially in the very hottest point of where the rotor, that's why you start seeing cracks in the middle of rotors. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now on this rotor, because it's a SRP drilled and slotted, mm -hmm. we wouldn't use this on say your car because we, we don't want to take mass away. We need all of that radiator, right? Correct. Yep. But as you keep tracking your car, you're going to start noticing that there's going to get little tiny spider web cracks. Yep. That's good. Okay. okay. Good, really, because most people think it's bad. They think that that's bad, but that's good. That means that we're managing the temperature properly. Okay. And then if it comes back down and they're little tiny checks, we're good. When we start getting the big fissures, that's when you got to send me some pictures. Of them. Or what happens a lot of times is you're going too fast for that brake pad. Okay. You let the car sit in the pits too long with the caliper and it's saturated that area and it's split the rotor apart. Don't do that again. I always learn something with Mike. <laughs> <laughs>